very, I just, you know when you really suddenly think you've done something really wrong? You're like, ah! Yeah, that was, that was me just there. Alright, let's kick this off to the bottom left hand side. Our Blue Terran player from O-Gaming is Marine Lord, who is just being harassed here as we get into game number one. And to the top right hand side, our red Protoss player is Mac. How many of Wardy's goals have we met tonight? Well, we met the donation goal pretty fast. We've had a lot of subs, but we're not quite at the 500 sub goal. But I'm not going. To, I'm not trying to bait you into more subs. We've already had an insane amount of subs today. Um, the Christmas tree is still standing. I'm not sure if the Christmas tree falling over is a goal of me per se, but it's definitely a goal of the chat. So I guess that one's not quite been met. Um, yeah, it's going pretty well. We're having some good games in general too. I'm having a pretty good time. How are you guys doing? Hope you're hopefully you're all doing well and having some fun with me today. Um, enjoying the matches, I definitely am as well. So hopefully you guys are too. It's uh, been some good Starcraft to get us started. As you see the Reaper coming across. Karago Nefesh says, suck it, Wardy. Here's a sub with the Twitch Prime dropping down. Thank you so much, Karago Nefesh, for the Twitch Prime sub. I'm not saying don't subscribe. I was just because I was in particular answering Laser Sec, I just wasn't trying to bait Laser Sec into more gifted subs. I don't want to come across like that or anything. I was just trying to answer the uh, question honestly. But thank you so much, Laser Sec. You have been an absolute hero. And thank you so much, Karago Nefesh, for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Today's already been an incredible day. And we're only two hours in, and it's only our fourth best of three. And we have up to 10 of them to cast for you, depending on how long they take and so on. Man, this week of StarCraft's just insane. On Saturday, our Korean server playoffs, and Sunday, the European server playoffs. It's going to be so much fun. You know, we've seen the Ripper and the Marines coming down in the Adept, taking a few shots there. So Marines continue to push forwards into this at the moment. We'll get rid of one of the Adepts there. Remember, Marine Lord didn't look brilliant against Cyan earlier, did drop the first map, but then was able to bounce back. And in fairness, he looked very good when bouncing back. But, um, yeah, definitely looked a little bit shaky at points as well, as you see those Marines and the Reaper continue to press forward. Cyclone locks on, the Stalker will go down. And that Stalker still moving out into the center with the Twilight Council dropping into the main base of the Protoss here, so very fast Twilight after the Robo Facility. No Stargate play this time around. Prism is about to pop out and is going to start moving across down to the bottom left. A Reaper will hop up here pretty swiftly into the uh, into the main. Having a little bit of a look around here. Probe's just mining away on the natural. And again, Prism with a few stalkers just moving down to the bottom left to see what's up. So Observer just sat overhead. That's Seed Shank there. Cyclone and a few Marines. All of this gathering up together as we do see the stalkers in the War Prism down on the bottom there. Comes that Reaper from Marine Lord also coming out and now going to move up to the top side and uh, keep this going. What's up, Harstam? Thank you so much for the host. Hello, everyone from Harstam's stream. Harstam has been... Uh, uh, is actually going to be playing in this tournament tomorrow evening. So uh, if you guys are Harstam fans, which I assume you are because you're watching his stream. Then again, sometimes I just watch Harstam's stream for the memes. I don't actually like him that much, but I still tune in. Um, Harstam is going to be playing in this tournament tomorrow. So make sure you drop on by then. And uh, again, hello to you all. Hope you're having a good time. And uh, again, thanks, Harstam. All the hoes, you see this Reaper popping in and is going to grab a probe kill to get us started here. Another probe goes down too. I mean, not bad for the Reaper, which also gets the scout and information as well. That blink still just coming through as the Cloak Banshee came in and only found one worker, deflected pretty fast, an Observer and Stalkers nearby. Good defense by Mana. Now he's going to come forward to try and greet this tank push already. Observer was left behind a bit though, so Stalkers will take a couple shots from the Banshee as well. Tank does get sieged up, and we are going to be seeing again those couple of gates in the front going to be in some real trouble. Man, I'm walling off with this on oh, the natural. is not kind of regular for PvT. Was maybe afraid of Hellion run buys or so. Um, is one of the real reasons you'd wall off here, but now it's just going to cost him a couple of gateways because this tank push has come across. 
This is very easily damage dealt by Marine Lord at the moment. You're going to see the Marines and the Cyclone continue to pressure in. You're not going to see the next couple of pylons continue to drop as well. Here we go. Mana going to try and break this as soon as possible. As you see the Banshees pull back, they'll turn back around. The Stalkers blink on top of the tanks. I mean, the bunkers are still coming up, but they're not done yet. But the tanks just take so, so, so much here. The Banshee's picking up a bunch of kills as well. Very nicely done. And just going to be seeing the shield battery going to fall down. And that Stalker still just poking away. Continue to do just a little bit of damage. A couple of SCVs will come in there as we see the Zelts are going to continue to take some hits also. And this is looking as though we're going to be seeing. Well, these probes continue to just be in some trouble. Mana is in a world of pain here in game number one as Marine Lord is pushing his way through. There's another couple of probes going down. And those Banshees still up in the sky. They're going to turn back around and get rid of a few more of these probes. I mean, this is now 20 probes killed. A couple of SCVs out across the side of the map obviously went down as well, but. Marine Lord comes out in a great position. Even keeps this Banshee alive to find one more probe on the third base and will continue to pull that away. And behind all of it, there goes Stimpak, there goes Combat Shield, there goes the plus one attack upgrade. Getting ready for all of this now as we have these supply depots just set up in the back of the natural. So if Stim, Combat Shield and plus one all on the way through at the moment, I mean... Obviously a good set of upgrades, and that's going to be Marine Lord. Once he gets those upgrades, it's going to be in a really good spot. I mean, that man at the moment really doesn't have anything he can do apart from, well, trying to replace workers. He has Blink, which is nice, but obviously to replace Stalkers is very expensive. And he isn't really going to do that, because they're not that great into the mid-game either, unless he plays certain styles. You know, if you play, like, Disruptors or Colossus, then a good few Blink Stalkers can be very useful. But I think instead he wants to play a style that can survive the next big push which is probably going to mean just massing up as many units as possible. Uh, so going to be very gateway focused, and instead he's going to get charged. So again, with the blink already up, that's not going to help. He can go into charge here, of course. I mean, one shield battery doesn't save you against two Banshees that fire at the same time. That's the issue that we're seeing right now is four, five, six workers going down, just as man is already trailing and hurting. That's nine more probes killed off in the main. Good damage dealt yet again by Marine Lord. He was trying to make up for what has just been a rough loss for him against, um, a very rough loss for him actually against, um, against Denver, of course. 0-2 very quickly. If he can fight back here, it really keeps him looking good in the group. I mean, he took down Cyan 2-1, lost to Denver, and he has Raynor left to play. If he beats Mana, he's 2-1 with Raynor left to play. Well, 2-2. He's going to pick the group. Man is just going to GG out. Nothing special happened. Nothing crazy. He's just all ready to put you up on the tree this time around. Just needed another couple moments. Bottom right hand side. We kick it off with the Terran player who did close out there in game number one. This is O Gaming's Marine Lord. Up against the Blue Protoss in the upper left hand side, we have ourselves Team Liquid's Manor. Game two of this best of three. And it's off, getting this rolling. Probe's going to be Chronobus Nati to begin with. We're going to be seeing a gateway getting dropped down in that main base there as we see the probe obviously gets onto the map and we'll go across to see what's going on. Gas and a Rax coming down here from Marine Lords. Getting those going with an SEV on the way out as well. And the probe also just coming down towards the bottom right-hand side of the map. So, probe moving down to the bottom right-hand side. SEV is on the way up. A couple of workers jumping into the gas. Rax coming up to completion here, so... Karas Junction, I mean, one of the big things I would always say about this map is, even for a push like what Marino did last time, you set up a push here with tanks and so on, pushing into the third base can be so powerful with that. It can really make life very difficult for the pros in terms of cleaning that up. Obviously, it doesn't have to be that push super early as well. In general, it's a very choked up area until you take these rocks down. So pushing in with Liberators, for example, and sieging up here, that's going to be very powerful. And you can also, have, because the third base is kind of far from the main, drops into the main while you hit that third. It can obviously just cause even more complications as well. So that's kind of what we saw with Marine Lord against uh, Scion in that uh, matchup where... It just got to the kind of point where we did play this map for game number three, and Marine Lord just really started to pull Cyan apart.
Probe coming around to the top. Nexus dropping down in the natural. Reaper coming across as well. Factory down in the main base too. Spring was going to a very fast second racks here. Uh, means obviously you'll generally have a fast stim and a 2-1-1 is not the most common of builds in TVP but it is going to be what's brought out here and Factory when that finishes a star portal come down so this is generally going to be a 16 marine drop. You have to be very careful of it in TVP because if the Proros is prepared and shuts down the medivacs it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't deal much damage. What does matter is if you don't if you lose the units because the units are going to be a huge chug of what you need to defend counter attacks into will just fight the Proros army at all Compared to in TVZ, obviously it's bad if you lose the units, right? But in TVZ, a lot of the time you can lose the units, but it will still cost us, very rarely does the Zerg kill the Medivacs with units inside, with Queens, for example. And that's the only way where the Zerg trades without losing anything. So in TVP, it's much easier to lose those Medivacs and those units without actually killing anything of value. And that's what you have to be very careful of here, because the last thing you want to do is have a... Um, it's just it's just the last thing you want to kind of lose units because it is very easy to just not get anything done with this. So the only thing keeping it alive and uh, keeping those units around to move forward with as we do see a couple of stalkers from Manor will be positioned to defect that Reaper. There's no easier way in elsewhere. I guess you could jump up over here. The stalkers just dive forwards and will get the kill. This probe has just been finally making its way back home as well. Oh, how funky. Nacho never actually started up a starport. So he's going to go into an engineering bay and he just gets a cyclone at first. And I guess it's just a fast stim pack with a cyclone to help defend or... It's, um... Yeah, it's, it's pretty funky, isn't it? It is a little bit different. I won't lie, I didn't pay attention super closely the first couple of minutes. I just saw the two racks in a factory, which obviously looks like 2-1-1 and... It could be 2-1 run, right? I guess the stim pack's maybe a bit late. Like 40 seconds to go. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit late, so... Okay. I mean, this could very easily have been a starport and a reactor, though. And then just get the Medivines across the map. Now the Marines are going to have Stim and not much to really do with it. That does exist a 420 build, you know, that hits a 420. It's the Hellbats, right? In TVZ or something. Uh, I didn't realize it hit exactly at 420 until my chat the other day when someone did it was like, Dang! Bow, 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 bow. Smoke weed every day! It's kind of crazy. Never seen chat so active in my life, apart from when people are entering to play marbles. Uh, Stalkers do have blinks, so Mana might be trying to use that here. Uh, as we do have the Observer was setting up and then decides not to set up any longer. Just moving around up in the main base. And again, there's Bio just gathering up on the natural ramp. We're going to be seeing the Cyclone coming down the left side. I kind of like the Cyclone. I didn't think it was going to do much, but in fairness, at the end of the day, it's actually given a lot of map control. It's been around on that top left side for quite a while. Observer just going to be setting up with its observing mode there just for a second again. And another wheel dropping down. Left hand side, the Cyclone is still being chased. Stalkers will blink down. Cyclone will be killed. Now we do have the Bio coming forwards. Nice scan, gets the Observer immediately. Always scary to kind of go up against Stalkers with mostly Marines. He doesn't want to expend his stim already. Uh, instead, he's actually just going to load up his Medivacs and move those across the map. The Stalkers won't see that happening. So, Mana unaware of that. And obviously, Marine Lord will want to try and defend that information from Mana. Stop Mana from poking forwards and seeing there's a lack of units here. Uh, maybe it's tough though, because of course, because he lost the Observer, Mana doesn't know that those units are also not in the main. So, Mana could maybe think about this drop, but it definitely isn't a certainty. He is pulling the Stalkers back though, realizing that the time for them to really be able to do much is ticking away. And that obviously potential things such as drops could come in very soon. And here we go, straight into the main base. These two Medivacs, well, Colossus comes out, but obviously that's kind of on its own at the moment. And for the moment, Marine Lord Stim is after it. He could kill the Robo Facility here. He's had the time to... Instead, he wants to go for probes. Stalkers blinking into the main, but they have to come through a choke point. That's 12 workers killed. Uh, the part I love about this is he gets away with the medevacs. Only three marines lost and 13 workers killed. Yeah, maybe he could have traded for a bit more, but getting out alive is huge, because now that drop has even more potential as the game goes by. Probe here, for example. Boom! Get it! Get it! 
There we go. Probe will get picked off there. And, uh, well, meanwhile, other units coming across. So we're going to start seeing that kind of multi pronged aggression like we saw against Cyan on this map from Marine Lord a little bit earlier on today, where it is difficult to defend the main and also defend this bird. They are all kind of spread out from each other. The Zealot leaves a bit too soon to see the attack coming in, so Manor is blind to this, although the scan gives him a pretty good idea that there's some potential for an attack there. And he obviously knows there's a potential for an attack anyway. That's why he's positioning his Colossus and the rest of his units like he's doing. Puts two Colossus down to the south on the third base. The rest of his units, a lot of Stalkers in the main to kind of blink on those Medivacs as they come in, stop them from ever being able to unload. That's obviously the strength of those Stalkers. Shut that down and uh, go from there. Bio pulls still around, going a little to the left-hand side. Medivax going up to the top two, and I like it from Marine Lord, just a little bit of positioning and threatening. Not so much uh, actual damage to be done or anything. Marine's picking off that uh, Zealot which came across the map and did cause quite some complications as the Bio farming from Marine Lord is going to shame once again, but the Colossus hitting a couple of Marines right away there. No problem at all as they push that back. You mean we'll try and blah, drop into the main, but again, with that many stalkers, you just don't come into it. It's just not worth it. These stalkers will blink for one of the medivacs and probably will blink for the other as well. Where's boost? It is available. Marine Lord should already be boosting that away, and he does that now. Maybe a bit late, especially because he stuck around for a moment. No, he'll keep it alive. Well, this gets interesting because obviously now we have a kind of an attack in from uh, Mana. And Marine Lord is definitely not prepared to deal with. He's spreading out his units, and well, did he actually? I think he might have just stimmed some of these accidentally. Meanwhile, on the ground, he's just going to load over here, knowing that obviously a lot of Mana's army is across the map. He's, he just pushes in on the ground. He doesn't have to worry so much about the uh, setup of having to unload in the main, etc. He has the attempt from Marine Lord to defend back at home, but it's not successful at all. Mana has way too much. Marine Lord will have to pull away over here as well. He doesn't have enough either, and ah, wow, Mana makes this work. I wouldn't even say that before this point, Marine Lord made too many mistakes. He was very good with his units. He killed a bunch of probes. Just didn't really have any sort of response to the Colossus of but in Mana, Game 3, Horde Alexander. Thank you for sitting through the break. The ads do help to, uh... Uh... Support the stream and support the tournament. Again, this tournament is put on by myself and Take TV. We take money out of our own pockets to put it on. I said, me and Naruto were talking about this. Naruto's the guy who put it on from Take TV. Um, we were talking about this and we said... I uh, would be very honest about this when we were broadcasting during the tournament that... If this was a success, if we were able to recuperate the funds invested into the tournament, and if it was a big success, etc., that we'd be very interested in doing more of this again in the future. Now, I know you guys might think, well, Wardy, you kind of run tournaments all the time and stuff like that. But, I mean, I usually run, like, you know, $300 to $500 tournaments. This is a $1,500 tournament. It means we can get the best players in the world. It means we can put in, you know, we can put on a bit of a longer tournament as well, more action over a longer period. It, it means that when we just announce it, it's more hype and it gets more viewership. It's really good for the ecosystem of StarCraft, I feel. So, if you do enjoy, if you enjoy the games, if you enjoy the action, you can always thought about maybe supporting somehow, whether it's me, whether it's Take TV. You know, subscribe, whatever. Do give it a think. Do check it out. Appreciate it. It does all good awards again. For the most part, putting on these tournaments and helping us keep on casting StarCraft. Every little bit helps. Ripper coming down to the natural here. We'll be going in towards the natural right away. Probe, uh, sorry, Pylon and a Nexus set up there, as we'll see the probe moving over to the side. Ripper backing away towards the upper left-hand side now, as we see the SCV and the probe going to have a bit of a fight. Probe will go down. So as that probe falls, as you see, the extra barracks was built again here. So Marine Lord kind of going into a similar build as what he did on Kairos Junction. The two racks with the factory. Now I'm still intrigued as to when we do see that starboard come down. Um, I feel like the second gas. Well, second gas finishing now. I mean, he's going to go into stim right away, right? We kind of know that. There's definitely just not the gas here that's needed, though, to go into a starboard. Because he has to start stim, then I guess the tech labs. I guess the cyclone once again. Interesting. I think he just takes the second gas later than 2 one, one Like I said in the last game, I wasn't uh, super attentive to the little bits and pieces last time. Uh, this time, I can definitely tell you, the gas is later than usual, and that's why you're probably unlikely to see the starboard instead. Again, just the cyclone once more. There's a depth in the stalker who's having a pretty good time moving forwards, though, and already the Marines being lost. 
for a raise to block the Adept from getting in. Mana will stay backed off though, will not go too much further forwards. He doesn't know Mana that this is a double rack, so he probably expects a factory to be done a bit sooner already actually, and for Cyclone to already be out. So he's been a bit more cautious than he maybe needed to be. Obviously maybe doesn't get all of the damage done that he would have liked to, but it's just the way of the world. And the Stalker just pulling back over to the bottom right hand side and as the Warp Prism pops out we'll see the choice from Mana is going to be the Dark Shrine so Mana really going to switch things up here. It's dark Shrine coming through. We do you have the uh, Prism. Two Stalkers and the Adept all heading towards the upper left. Cyclone on the front going to start taking a little bit of damage. Nice little lift up there though. Picks up one of those Stalkers, gets ready to warp in to keep pressing through. You have the Prism, obviously you can deflect the Cyclone damage quite nicely. But for Siege Tank on the way, I don't think there's really much chance of this doing a lot. I mean, five Stalkers is nice and all. And yeah, they can hide very nicely against the Marines, but Tank is sieged up, although very far back. Will fire onto the Adept there. There's definitely room for these Stalkers to work around the left side. I think because of that, more than anything, the Siege Tank actually has to come forwards here. Uh, Nice micro look, just lifts up that stalker last moment. There we go, tank does move its way down to the low ground. And that should this time be good enough to kind of keep everything safe from harm. Just keep the marine lord busy though, and again we do have the Dark Shrine on its way. The first TT is warping in, this mule's just sat there doing nothing. It's not only is it 50 energy that's not here to scan, it's uh, 50 energy that is not actually bringing in more minerals or anything. So. That's a little bit painful as we're going to be seeing a single DT moving into the main base. Scans instantly in the main, but obviously there's going to be DTs elsewhere at the same time on the natural currently picking off a siege tank and Marine Lord actually runs into the scan here in the main, but is unable to actually get anything up. DT and the natural score crazy and Mana is already putting himself in a very, very good position. Marine Lord will just have to type out game as Mana takes him down. And